we are going to have a go at fitting a winch now this is going to be a fairly mammoth job so what have we done so far we have taken off the front plastics they're littered around the floor there they are it's not too hard to do the clips are a little sort of doinky but plasticky and that but we'll gloss over that for now right so i have to tell everyone that i have been given this winch kit and winch there's a winch on the floor over there somewhere in that box but i'm not going to go into the winch at the moment this is going to be the winch mounting so i'll do two parts because it's going to be big enough so this is the winch mounting bracket tree fitting video right so Land Rover have given me this winch and winch mounting kit free of charge, um, which is very kind of them. And thank you very much, Mr. Skywalker at Land Rover. We have had a few issues with the Land Rover that Land Rover have supported us with. And um, just as we're working together, they have kindly given me a winch. So that's great. Now, turns out, <laughs> rather embarrassingly, there is another YouTube channel who have had a problem when they've had their winch installed but i'm not going to go into that but the people who know about that will know what i'm talking about suffice to say when we're fitting the winch we've got to be careful for tyler a wire a wire now you see i've got the microphone now tyler you see so i've see that i've got wire. so i've effectively muted you now tyler you can make all the clever comments you like back there but i'm in control of the sound but you're in control of the, what we're looking at right we're waffling again so let's get on with it right so the winch mounting kit comes in three parts and the instructions are online and i'll put the link in the in the description box below so you can read these for yourself if if my screenshot is not very clear right now so there's three parts so the basically how's that looking tyler this is the big this might look small on the screen it's the massive frame we'll see this and this is what i'm going to call the behind the scenes mounting hardware for the winch right and if i scroll down a little bit we'll see the nuts and bolts for the same right and this is the second part so this is more the front of house stuff so this is what you'll see this is the winch cover kit this is everything on the front on the outside ish it's not all visible but that's the main gist of it and then for some reason all on their own we have these two little crash cans so with that let's go and look at the car and then we'll do a bit of unboxing and then we'll start some work so there is this front i would call it a cross member but in the instructions they call it an armature which is something i thought was to do with electric motors and stuff but this bit here right now this bit's main purpose in normal real everyday life is to absorb impacts from the crash and give you some strength across the front end and these cans here are supposed to sort of crumple backwards and they're supposed to absorb the energy in a crash now from what i've seen and i haven't done this yet so this is my first time you and i were doing this together so bear with me if i if i make mistakes but basically i think we're going to unbolt this uh, this front cross member get all the plastics out of the way and then we're going to put a big one on to replace it that goes across and here you can see the main chassis leg so anything we winch on all the weight and everything is going to go all the way down this big sort of chassis it doesn't have a chassis it's not like the old discovery threes and fours where you can lift the body off the chassis this is a monocoque so but that still has a sort of integral chassis like rail right then tyler let's open some boxes right while you're down there tyler get the part number on this end now i'm baffled by this because this here says part number 490 now the instructions don't refer to a 490 now land rover have sent me this and chosen this for me now i think the instructions have got the wrong part number on but we will let mr skywalker check it out and tell me because these refer to a uh, i'm looking for a 489 sorry this is the bit up here this so this is this kit and it refers to a 489 but when i put 489 into jaguar land rover's own part number system it comes up with something for a bull bar um so i'm not sure i think this should be 490 now they also talk in the instructions about a 427 and a 489 and i don't know what the difference is um it's somewhat confusing but it just goes on to say something about if you installation of the 427 will require some sounder harness or something so i've got no idea what the difference is and i'm a little confused but we're going to gloss over that and we're going to dive in to this lovely box here this is a proper proper heavy box 
I can just about lift it. it it's, you know, and it's all on a big pallet. Look, that's a, that's a proper box, isn't it, Tyler? That is there you go. Yeah, right. So let's have a look what we've got in here. Right then. Woo, Tyler's right in there. Right then. So we have, we have a, some grillage. There we go, a little grill that's gonna laser cut metal. That looks nice. If you're into grills, right. And we have a little box of something or other, a 437. What's a 437, Tyler? I think that might be some parking sensor bits. Oh, am I opening these correctly? Because I think we're gonna have to change some. So I think it's, oh no, look at that. That's a little, a little hole. Oh, it might be a, it might be a camera. I think that might be a front camera mount. I don't know. I should read the instructions. Right then, let's have another dive in here. We got a little bit of, looks like a sort of weather guard, doesn't it? Weather guard. All will become clear. Right then, do I just go for it, Tyler? Or let's get, I got some, that one looks a bit trapped underneath. Right, there's a bit of rubber trim. Right, so this is the big, big thing. This is, I guess, the tray that's going to... I love the sound of metal on glass table. Right then, so we got some bracketry strapped here. We'll have a look at that in a minute. Right then, we have got some weather trim again. It's obviously going to seal against the body somewhere. Right then. Right then, I like these. These Land Rover used to do all the fitting kits on this sort of vacuum formed things. This is quite nostalgic. I haven't seen these for a while, but they're quite cool. And at least you knew you sort of got everything. Um, so we've got, we've got some fairly big old solid metal bracketry there. Mm -mm. Hopefully that'll make some sense. That's a bolt, oh my goodness me. They, they, They've sort of stapled it down, have they? Or stuck it, stuck it down. There we go, stuck it down. But that again, that's spot on. That is, that is top notch accessory packaging. We can see everything we've got all there nice and clear. That makes it easier for us, doesn't it, Tyler? Mm. Yeah, right, there we go. Get it all out. Yeah, we can just, right. What have we got here? That's an odd one, isn't it? A bit of laser cut stainless. You know, so there's a little, that's very bizarre. Right. Some, oh, that looks like the, the mouth plate. There's probably a technical term for this. The winch mouth. Oh, look at that, that's shiny. Oh, that's nice. Oh, I'm gonna unwrap that. That looks like it's um, billet aluminium. Oh, that is really nice. Oh, I'm in love with it already. Oh, I've thrown some. I'm in love with that already. What's that? Something about getting your fingers rolled up. A book and a net. Look at that though. That is really nice. Yeah, it's got his own part number. That is. Do you like that tile? I like shiny. Looks just looks engineered. Oh, and look at this. And look, they've got nice stainless countersunk bolts with Allen heads on them. Look at that. That is proper. Look at that. That's going to go in there. Look. Right, so we'll keep those two together. Right. Am I out yet? No. Right then. Ah, now, now I think these are, I'm guessing here, I'm just making it up, but I think they're going to bolt on there where these sort of crash cans are, and I expect then the other crash cans are going to go in front or something, I don't know, we'll have a look, but that is fully welded, but yeah, you can see that, that's all properly laser cut, welded, that's nice, nothing wrong with that. That's properly engineered, right. Now, I don't know if they've got an L and an R labeled in them. I do like it when they, when they laser luz and ruz in there, because they're clearly handed, those two. You can, if I put them, if I put them that way, Tyler, you can see these, these end faces here are different. This one's got a slot, and this one's just a triangle. So they are handed, those two. Right. We have the bit of paper with the barcode, which will take you to the website we're on, but don't worry about that, because I'm going to put the link below. Right. And then, another one of those brackets. 
Right, where's that knife gone, Tyler? Have I lost that? Well, don't give me anything, Tyler. Scissors. Scissors, I can see it, but yeah. Oh, oops, sorry. Let's just have a look what's in here. And then we've done the unboxing. That's, looks like a sort of stay bar to me. It looks like it's gonna sort of break as it goes. But who knows? But I like this where they've, uh, this is good. I like it when they've cable tied the bits together to stop them rattling about and damming each other. Yeah. Better than that under tray where they put a strap the whole thing to those little hooks and bent them. But right then, we got cable ties, we got rubbish, we got rubbish. And it looks like there's some sort of a bit of plastic in there. Lots of bits of plasticky stuff. Like that, that almost looks like, Oh, it looks like almost something's going to go on there, but I'm not sure. Right. Stop hypothesizing, Simon, and get on with it. Right. That's the first, that's only the first box. Ty. It's going to take me three days to unbox it. Someone's written to us and said, have luck, Simon. May the force be with you. He said, it's taken me three days to do the uh, winch mountain. I haven't got three days. We've got to get it done quicker than that, time. Right. All right. Right, here we go. So this is the second bit. So this this box should be all the externally bits, right? So this, let's have a look. Right. Oh my goodness me, we got we haven't got room in the workshop for all this, Tyler. Right, let's have a go. Let's have a go. Let me just rearrange us here a bit. Right. If I pull all of this out, you can close, remove the box or close the box. Yeah, close those box down. Let's use it as a platform, Tyler. Let's use it as a little display. There we go. Right. We have some nuts and bolts and fixings. Again, they're not as nicely packed, those, are they? And they're in those thin, thin zippy bags. But they're, they're safe, they're secure. You have a bubble bag. Hmm. Bizarre. <laughs> See? Oh, no, Tyler. <laughs> Don't put plastic bags on your head. Right then. Not advice. Not advice. Right, so, oh look, we've got some double, it's just gonna be held on with double-sided tape. It'll be fine, it'll be fine, yeah. No. Hmm. Right then. Some end bits, right? And then, now, am I going to have to wrap to paint this now, Tyler? Is it? Let's hope it's not silver. Oh, thank goodness it's not silver. Oh, should we get Harry to wrap to that? Because I've wrapped it in my front bumper now, haven't I? So, I th there we go. So, let's have a look at that. We've got some grill, man. I'm gonna, is it injection molded or vacuum formed? That's injection molded. So, obviously, I think this is going to cover where our front two parking sensors were. So, that's... That's gone. Right, there we go. So that's going to cover over and that's going to be our new sort of front thing. And I guess that supports this. Is there any fixings on the inside? Has it got that? Oh, look, it looks like it's good. Oh, I know what that is, Tyler. You know what goes on there, don't you? Clips. Them white clips. Ah. Oh, that's going to be exciting. I was going to do it. Do they give you any white clips in the box? No. And I think that's going to clip into there. I think that's going to all clip on there, like, boom, like that, bam. Right, but I don't think we're going to need that till later. Right, we're nearly there, we're nearly there. I've lost the knife again. Oh, found the scissors though. Right, let me slide in front of you here, Tyler. The last bit of the puzzle. And then that's part one, no. Part unboxing, part one of video one done. We'll keep going that. Right then. Ah, so these are our crash cans. All right, so let's have a look. Aluminium. They're not, not sort of painted and they look a bit, look a bit. The other stuff's all quite nicely finished, isn't it? Yeah. I mean, it doesn't matter. We're not worried as long as they do look as clever little sort of section inside of it. Look. Right, and are they handed? Are they, are they gonna write uh, left and right on there for me? Oh. Oh, he's gone through the box. There you go. Right in. Right in. 
So let's have a look. Do they look the same? Do they look hand in? I think they look, I think they look the same. That's why they haven't written left and right on there for me, Tyler. I was talking rubbish, look. They look fairly symmetrical. Oh, no. No. No, because, they, they, yeah, that, that distance there and that distance there are different, aren't they? So, um, yeah, let's have a look at that. They, you think if you're writing all those letters on there, look, you think you'd write an L and an R on there just for the banter, wouldn't you? It's a lettering completely the same. Let's have a look. That's a... 853 AA and that's a uh, 852 AA look so so no they're not the same come on give me an L and an R right. yeah they've done some tricky sort of TIG weld in there Boosh. Throw right throw me a bone throw me some rope land rover right right let's dive straight over right now with this video we're using our new camera again. I've got my mic on. I've left the furry bit off this time. Right, with this video, what I'm doing, I haven't done this before, but I am doing a bit, and I've done this bit while Tyler's been working in the warehouse this morning, and I've put it all back together. So you will notice all the bolts I take out are all coloured, and I'll appear to know what I'm doing, but I've only got as far as getting the plastics off. Right, here we go. Right, so what should we do first? So the first bit we need to remove is this first cross bit here. So, uh, do the little pointy thing, Tyler, that there. Right, so removing the front bumper and grill, I've already done, and we will insert the link. If I forget, please tell me, because I can't do it till I've uploaded the video. Right, here we go. We are gonna first. Now, I've done this cleverly. Right, I've colored the bolts in white. So the first ones we're gonna do is for this front sort of cross membery plasticky bit. So we've got one in there. Right, okay, so I'm gonna want that one out. I haven't done them up tight, because I've just, Put them back in. You can hold the torch as well if you wouldn't mind, Tyler. Right. You've got two hands, that's it. Get on with it. Right, so that, so these are the, so this is for this front cross member. That's one of the, and where's the other two? Ah, now notice they're not the orange ones. We're doing those next. The first ones are the white ones, so get a look where they are. Zoom back a little bit, actually, Tyler. Go out a bit, give them a chance to see where it is because you'll need to know when you put it back together which bolts go where. Now, all four of these white hex head bolts I'm taking out now are all the same. They're quite long, okay? And they've got this sort of self-cleaning thread on them. How's that new camera doing on close-ups, Tyler? It's doing good. It's doing good. One, two, three. Ugh. So we got George to do the pressure washing. That saved you a job, didn't it, Tyler? You normally skip out on the old pressure washing there. You normally get... <laughs> yeah, you normally get one of the other guys have a go at that. Right, now before I take this off, we're gonna have to get this. So this is our radar. Now you may or may not have a radar, but you can see it's tethered on to this front bit here. So let me just get that trim tool. I'm gonna dive in front of you. Such poor photography. Right then, and what we're going to try and do is get this bit here off. I coloured it in orange, yours won't be. So I've got to get in between in between the back there. And just uh, uh, uh. Now bear in mind I've had him off once, so he, he came off a little easier that time than he did the first. Right, when you're putting it back together, don't forget that. Right, if we cut for any looms yet, we should do woo 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 warning. Now the radar loom would be bad if you cut the radar loom because that does your emergency braking. Actually, let's talk about looms a bit while we're here, Tyler. Right, hold on. <clears throat> Let me get this out and we'll do a little loom interlude. Right. Right there. There's something sort of clipping it, it feels like. Okay, so I think there, I think there's a little hook here. You just have to sort of lift it you see if I put my finger behind it there, you see it's just got that little end on it? Yeah. There you go, I've got the light on it now. Yeah, you just got that little turn, so you have to sort of it up. Right, so that is that. So remember, when you're putting it back together, those four bolts and that, that is together. Right, let's talk about loom. So apparently, they did have a problem with some cutting through some loom when refitting the winch. Now, 
And apparently this loom was like one of the main looms and couldn't be repaired or difficult to repair. So they didn't want that car going out. Again, you'll have to watch the other video, but right. The issue now, when you take off the bumper, this loom here, you've got to be a bit careful. This is a camera loom and I wouldn't want to work. I couldn't solder that back on. That would be tricky because there's actually several connections. Well, two connections. There. That's a sort of a FACRA connector. That's right, that's how you say it. Um, and that's the other, so that's the only looms I've come across so far. That was my first loom, processed without incident. This is the second loom, but that's the radar. Um, the radar's like a thousand pounds, it's built into the grill. So, and that does your emergency braking. So that could be, I don't know how you're gonna cut it off, but there we go, we, we may, our words, Tyler, we may well cut it off. Right, the next bit of grillaged thing to come off is this, right. Now, what is this? This is, there's a little motor here and we've got electronic flaps. There we go. And I think what it does is all these little, it fires a little mechanism. I'll see if I can do it when we got it off. And it opens up all these flaps to let the air flow through into the radiator. And I think it's a way of keeping it, making sure it gets up to heat. And I think that's to do with the environmental stuff. So we've got the petrol engine and it seems to like to get really hot really quickly. And it could be due to the gasoline particulate filter needs to get hot. But I don't know, I could just be waffling. <laughs> what size Torx is that? Right, that is a Torx T30. We labeled them, didn't we Tyler? Right. And all the bolts for this bit are the same. So we've done the top two. And now it's these bottom two here. So these are next to those other ones we did that were white earlier. Right, and that's it. I remember now. I've only done this this morning. I forgot how it went together already. Right, so look, they're all the same. One, two, three, four. It's easy so far, isn't it, Tyler? No looms were damaged in the making of this video. Reassembling it, but we try and do these videos so that you can actually put it back together again by sort of showing you the fixings and where they go. Right, so that right now, this bit here, you got. I'll show you when I take it out because it's sort ah right. This is all ready to come out. Apart from, it's got a connector here. Right now, this was a bit of a pig. Right, <clears throat> so I don't know quite why they've done this. But you can't get into this connector for, and they've got this little, can you see this little white leg coming down here, Tyler? Yeah. And you've got to get your screwdriver in there and we've got to fire that white leg down. Wait, sorry. Right now, I think I might have overdone it last time. But actually, I think, I think not. I think the only way I could find to do this, now this bit doesn't feel right to me. And I'll have to have a look what they say on these proper instructions, maybe. But there's a little tab I've got to, I've got to pull out that I can't get to until I fired that little plastic pin out. So can you see that little plastic pin there, Tyler? Okay, so that, that little plastic pin. He's funny, isn't he? He's funny, little. He feels like you should just be able to, but you see, you can't get to it, because the bit I need to get to is, we'll see when I've, it's in where the pin was. So I've got to, I've got to fire the little, the little tab that way. And then it'll, mm -hmm. Why is it that way? Hold on. I will show you when I get it out. If I get it out, I'll be here for a while. There, right. So what you've got here is, is I sort of tried to colour the tab. Let me get this one. I tried to colour the tab orange, but it's kind of tricky. But you've got this little tab here. Okay, and you have to press that. You have to press that in towards the connector to make that bit come out. So yeah, you've got to press that in that way. Of course you can't do it because the white thing is in the way. Um, so there we go, that's one out. Now then they've, they've put it on those, where's my trim tool? They've put it on a little barb fit in there. So we have to disconnect that one and it's exactly the same on the other side. Right there. Or not. I'm sure there was another one. Let me have a look. Oh, I think that's on the next, it's on the next bit. Right, there we go. Now, how does this fit in? 
So it's got these two hoops at the bottom that I've colored orange and they go in behind this other bit of plastic. So they go between the metal bit and the plastic there. So when you're putting that back together, you need to sort of pull that forward and fire that in. So that's that bit. And that bit goes in with these four. Which you got the Torx ones on it there. Right, now. Whew. Right, now we've got to get this bit here off. Now, it, see, it's got four of these. If you scroll along there, Tyler. And these, again, are all the same as those other ones we've taken out. So. Now, actually, while I'm doing that, Tyler, have a look at that radiator. That dirty. He is looking a bit murky, isn't he? Um, so we'll have to, we're gonna have to strip all this down and pressure. I mean, one thing that does point a debate is the radiator fins are quite fine on modern cars, which is cool for cooling. Cause see what I did there, Tyler. But I don't know how cool it is for off-roading and mud. It's almost like it needs a slightly bigger, but you see, Fine, the fine fins give you a lot of surface area, which is good for your cooling, because you want maximum surface area. I kind of cooling. Yeah. Especially if you're gonna, not in the UK so much, but if you're gonna, if you live somewhere exotic, Tyler, somewhere with a hot climate, something we're not blessed with. Like Cornwall. Like Cornwall, yes. Yeah. Somewhere exotic, <laughs> yes, with a hot climate, just like Cornwall. What? I don't know, they got all palm trees and that down there. If you go, they got. I don't know if that's just the fashion or what. Right. Now, now this one, I think, have we got a connector at that side? I've got a feeling we've got, have we got something else on? Yes. So I think this is another flap motory thingy. And I think it's got the same sort of deal tied. I don't reckon there's any way we're getting in to press that release button. He's extra secure. I don't know if I can. Feels wrong. Yeah, I don't know why. It's easier to put the screwdriver into that little square opening because there's a little lip holding it. Just, I think, yeah, he's, I think, I just sort of, uh, you see, it's that, that seems to go, but then it, you can't, oh, maybe you press on the, see, it's still not, the bit I need to press is behind there, Tyler. Unless I can then get, ah, oh, look, ah, oh, there's a trick, look. So you can get it up the first turn, but you've got to get in under, you can't, I, oh, it might do it, look. It might have enough to, it doesn't seem very effective. I think that's probably the way you're supposed to do it. So just pull it out a little click and then you can push on that, look, there you go. Oh, it's supposed to make your life easier, I think. <laughs> yes, <laughs> um, right, so there you go. So that is that bit there. So now I'm gonna have to go and look at the instructions and have a cup of tea. But I think next we're gonna take off what they call the radiator slam panel here. So I'm gonna work that out so we look good. I'm gonna color in some nuts and bolts and then we'll come back and take this whole bit here out. Right, Tyler's on the tools now. So we've now got to take this front panel off. Now we've colored, so there's some 10 millimeter bolts here that hold the catch on, the uh, bonnet catch. And there's the same bracket on the other side there. And we'll also take these 10 millimeter ones off here, which hold the horn on. So I've cut, so we might as well just whack those three, Tyler, and whack those three as well. Um, as you do it, Tyler, check whether the bolts are the same. Yep. So let's just make sure we know, we'll put it back together again. Oh, that was easy. Was that even tight? All right, give me that one. Let's have a look. So we just, again, we'll just check all the bolts there. That's right, so that right there. Has it got, oh, has it got a bonnet connector, has it? Yeah, there's a little tab on there. You can press that little tab. I think I can see the tab to push it back, that's it. So that must be the bonnet switch to check whether the bonnet is closed. Right, now you could add, yeah, okay, yeah, keep going. Right, let's see if that horn bracket. Is that the same? Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, all, when I can, it, it looks like it's just on a sort of plastic yeah. pin there. I think it'll pull off that. Yeah. Oh, he's, oh, he's yeah. got a sort of hooky, pinny. 
But it's clever how they've done it with one bolt, look. Yeah. Yeah. And then we don't need to, but what you will need to do is get the trim tool there, Tyler, and just get that, that loom off the, or you might just better pull it with your teeth. Just be careful. Oh, no, 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 no. <laughs> we don't want to damage looms, Tyler. Be careful, be careful with every loom. That's it, look, there you go. Some loom care. That's it, that's it, well done. Oh, no looms have been hurt so far. Right, so that's all good, you've done that side. So go on and whip that other side off, Super Pro. Now will there be a switch, will there be a wire on this switch or is it just on one side? Just the other side. Just the other side, yeah. Oh, yeah, that's the sort of backing bit of the, we have to watch that, I have to work that one. That's the backing bit of the, where was that? Where's that? Oh, that's the guide. That goes on there and that guides this cable, I think. That goes uh, around there and acts as a little guide. Hopefully that's clear to people. How are we gonna remember to put that back on, Tyler? I think you have to put, the, put one of the bolts back through there. Let that catch go down. Yeah. Right, let it drop it down. And just bolt that back on with you. Just spin it on with your fingers, that's it. And just put it back through that hole there. That one. Yeah, not the catch, just the, no. And then when we get back to put it back together, we'll realize we can't fit it because that's there, look, Tyler. When I mean, we could spin all the nuts into all the holes if we were, if we actually, let's do that, Tyler. Let's just, yeah. that's a good technique. Uh, we we'll get the last horn off and then. Yeah, you get the last horn and then what we'll do, do that off camera, yeah. So there's a little tip there. Well, otherwise you'll end up with loads of nuts and bolts everywhere. And again, what have you got there? You've got another, obviously another connector. you got a, on that little pin. I'll talk about that, but it's yeah, okay, I'll see how they work it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Again, well, if you in. shove it back in, put the bolt back in through it, Tyler. And then you'll be... Go on, go on, Tiger. And then, yeah, and that's a good way of putting, if we put all those bolts back in, we'll have an easier job when we come to reassemble which could be in a few days' time, according to... Hopefully it'll be yeah, You don't need to put them in one or two threads. Yeah, yeah. Right, um, right, we'll do, right, now you've got to just, on this cable here, there's a, there you've got to just pull these out. They've got funny little bits of paper around them, which don't seem that effective. I guess it's to stop it rattling or something. Right, so, so we can sort of straddle the bonnet catch assembly out of the way. So I think, I'll get that one there, that little connection there off, Tyler, with your trim tool. Same deal again. Don't damage the loom. Get underneath if you can. If you damage the loom, Tyler, you're in big doo doos. Actually, to be fair, do we need two horns? The joy of dual tone horns, Tyler. There you go. God, I'll talk oh. back. So we've got everything out the way. So we're just gonna spin those nuts back in, have a little break, and then we'll come back and take all these orange. It's quite a lot of bolts. It's, it's a lot of bolts. It must be to do with spreading the load, I think, when you have a, an impact. Right, we're ready to go. So right, you wanna rattle out those orange bolts. We've got a 13 millimeter socket on there. Right, let's have a look if these are all the same. Well, these are fairly big old, big old bolts. Right, on the video, I'll probably speed this bit up now. Yeah. Right, so they all look the same, right, Tyler? Yeah. There's a chunk of those bolts. Look at the water. That's blooming. That is a full Meccano kit there, look at that. That is a plethora. What's the collective pronoun for bolts, Tyler? A herd. A herd, I'll take That's... that. Right. right then, let me zoom out a bit. Right now, go on Tyler, see if, see if that just lifts out. I've got no idea. Never, wait. Is there any clips or cables on the inside? 
Some spongy, probably anti-vibration-y things. Right, let's have a look, spin it around. Model it for me, Tyler. Work it, come on. They're in here. They're in here, what are they? Ah, they're the top radiator mounts. Yeah. So this, what this is, Tyler, is the whole radiator look is free. So let me zoom out. You give a, so give that radiator a wiggle. So yeah, these on the pins, wiggle the pin. So the whole radiator pack is not linked to the engine because it was linked to the engine, it would rattle apart. But of course the cables have to go to the engine, the pipe, sorry. So when they mount radiators in cars, they do it in this sort of semi-flexible way. So it just sort of goes with the flow. It's neither, it's neither connected to the engine nor the chassis. It just sort of sits on the fence really. But it seems to work. So, um, so that's probably why those little rubbery bits are around here. That'll just form the sort of rubbery mount. And those pins probably come out or twist out. But that's called a rad pack and that's got all your radiators in there. Fairly standard. Right, we're looking, we're looking sort of bare now. I think, so I think we're up to where the instructions say. So, um, in fact, I think they say remove the armature. So I think that's gonna be our next job, which is gonna be, again, I'd call it a cross member, but I'll just have a check. And it's this bit that runs across the front here. And I think we may also have to remove our under cradle. Now we did a whole video on that. I have got the accessory under the front toe eye cover metal. The normal one is plastic. We've gone for the metal one because it's got a hole in the middle and also it's metal. So it gives us a bit more sort of running over rocks and things. So if you want to watch the video on fitting this, I will put the link there again, please remind me. Right. Right, so here we go. So we're now gonna take off the armature cross member. Um, right, so first of all, we're gonna have these two little brake ducts. Oh, this is brilliant. I'm sat in a chair here, zooming in and out. Right, so Tyler's doing all the work. So there's two, you can see the orange, yeah. So you get your little trim tool on those, Tyler. What's that? What are they? Are they fir tree barbed fittings, fir tree. Yeah, leave those in there. Oh, there we go. Right, get the bottom one out. Oh, he's full of water. Nice. Yes, have some swamp water, Tyler. Work it tight, that. Oh, that's all right. Oh, he started they different, are they? Right. No, they're the same. Right, so that's your left hand. Air. Hold on, zoom out. Oh, I'm loving this camera, Tom. Right, that's the zoom out one. Right, so that's that one off. I'll put that fitting back in there. Well, let me get that other one. Ah, oh, slimed. Yeah, just rattle it backwards and forwards a bit. I, I, when I say workout, because you sort of do one barb at a time, sometimes you... Right, so that's the other brake cooling duct. I'll zoom in, there you go, whoop, out. Right, good job. Right, and then you've got that little connecting just on the top there. Yeah, so can you get the trim tool in that? So that was for the that's for the, the automatic flaps on that side, wasn't it? Yeah. Right. So now Tyler, ready to go and get your big So that should be the cross member all loose, right? Ah, hold on, I'm not sure, Tyler. I'm not I'm a bit worried. No, I think we're gonna have to take this bottom off, Tyler. We're gonna have to take this bottom one because you see this bolt here, Tyler. Yeah, that is so we're gonna have to undo this bolt here. Um and let's get this bottom and then this front bolt here. I think it's just that bolt there and those front bolts there. So let's get those, let's get the sockets on those. Right, there you go. So yeah, we've got the two, there's those two vertical bolts that go up into the bottom, the bottom there, then just, and you can see that coming out. And then we'll, so we'll get those done and then we'll do, we'll get on and show you these bottom two here. Right, so we've done one. Tyler's just whipping the second one out now. Let's have a look at the bolts, Tyler, because then we can know when we put it back together which one's which. And what size was that? 13. That's 13. And then these other two middle ones were 15. Oh, let's get that's these. Either side of that front toe, toe hoop. Right, cover your ears. Oh, there you go. You 
chunky. Yeah, so that's the that's the 15 there. So that's the the big one there is the one that goes on to by the tow hoop. Now again, yours may be different if you haven't got the accessory. Um, right, now you're ready, Tyler, to whoop all those armature bolts. Ah, yeah, slide that out. Pull the sorry, pull the cross member out first. It, it should just slide out, I think. That's it. Is there any connections on it? Oh, there's that water pipe. You need your just get your tool. Yeah. yeah, in fact, it poppers actually, so you can go forward with that. Try there. If not, there's actually a little popper joint here. You can actually, I think, just snap it out the front. I seem to recall. Oh, yeah. Yeah, there you go. Yeah, that's quite cool. Um, right, so that's that's the reinforcing bar. Now put those bolts back. Now, yeah, I, I just put those bolts back in the front there, Tyler. Put those two in the front so that we know when we come back there. Now, do they, no, 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 sorry. The two in the front there. Yeah, that's useful, him. Yeah. Right, and then those other two go up into the armature. Even though we're taking it off, at least we'll know where they, where we find them, rather than just rattling around the workshop full. Or... They're good bolts. Got lead in. Yeah, we like a bolt with a lead in, don't we? It's a big thing. I like. Oh, oh there you go, the toilet. But cheers. Mm. Yeah. It does, and yeah, and that thread cleaning, that self-cleaning thread's quite cool as well. Right, so you now need to get the 13, was it, for those armature bolts? Check, you yeah, had it. I think, I think right. And let's rattle those. Pick everyone up, go on, Tyler. Rattle one out. Well, let's have a look at the bolt, and then, and then we'll get Tyler on. Right, so there's the... There's the bolts. Right, we'll get on with those. Right, put all that down, get it all out your way, and I reckon, Tyler, that's ready to lift off. Now, one tip for those of you who have endured it this far. Before we started, this is, everyone else will have missed this tip, put your car in the raised suspension, raise it up, and then, because most of your work is quite low, it just gives you a few more inches and makes it a little less strenuous. Right now, right, so we're, we're nearly there, but it's, we're, we're, we're connected. Somehow this front panel is connected. Now it, we could either do this two bolts that come down in behind here, but they're kind of tricky to get to with the headlight and everything in the way. I think if we undo these two front ones here and those two front ones there that we've colored in orange, I think we'll be all right. So they're 10 millimeter. Let's try that, Tyler. You're in some sort of semi-danger of it falling. Yes, because there's, no, there's nothing actually keeping that up then, is there, Tyler? So just be a little careful. I'll assist you. Gosh, did that whole headlight panel go loose then? Give that a wobble, Tyler. Let's have a look at that. Oh, it's not too bad. It's a little wobbly. Come around and do those two. and looser every time right so there we go we have it off there it is there is the armature now what were we messing about with there now there is a little stud here that sticks out backwards and it goes on to it goes on to this radiator support now if you've got we only had this on one side because we've only got one radiator i think other models have radiators on both sides um so we had to undo that it was a 10 mil socket to get in down behind the headlight to remove that and now we have the armature off so i so i think now we can get an oh and there was one there was a loom on that end as well wasn't there yeah, tyler hole. so we just had to take the fir tree fixing out of that 
And there we are, we're stripped down. I think we'll finish that video there for the day. We finished for the day, I'll upload that. So that's part one. So that is basically stripped down, armature removed, all the front, pla that's aluminium, is it? There we go. So there we go. So have we damaged any looms, Tyler? Not that we know of. Not that we know of, not knowingly. Right, so there we go. That's part one of the front panel strip down. And in fact, that'd be quite a good video to stand alone because you might want to do that even if you're replacing something not winch fitting. So we'll do that, how to strip the front of your defender down, remove your armature. Good luck with that.